Okay. So EPFL bonsoir. I'm I'm Go Hasegawa. Thank you very much for the introduction, Kirsten. I'm so happy to come here. And uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> difficult story pool. Um, yes, he asked me to talk about uh, Sakamoto Sensei. He's my teacher. Uh, Kazumi Kazumi Sakamoto is um, 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 one of my professor in uh, Tokyo Tech. So when I was a bachelor student, I, I learned from him as well, and also my professor Sakamoto. He's um, maybe he's not so famous in Europe now, but uh, actually in Japan and uh, also in Europe, he's getting uh, famous. Yes, this is a, a list of uh, the professor in Tokyo Tech. Start from Taniguchi, Seike, and as you know, Shinohara. Shinohara is a charismatic architect, especially in Switzerland or in uh, France. But uh, yes, I learned from Sakamoto and Tsukamoto. Tsukamoto, uh, Atareba, wow. And uh, yes, I talk about uh, Sakamoto. Ah, fortunately, I could invite him when I was teaching in Mendelezio until last year. Two years ago, I invited him for the guest of critic. And uh, we could organize a lecture by him in Mendelezio. And actually, we got a lot of uh, positive reaction from the audience, especially from young people. And uh, yes, I was so happy. And also my assistant, uh, the Veroha Tao and Samuel Skatsavir is now making the book about uh, Kazunari Sakamoto lecture in Mendelezio. And it's about to out in this summer, so check it. And uh, yes, I will start. And uh, we are talking about uh, the uh, Sakamoto. I would, I would start from uh, to talk about my my thesis, I I, I actually I, in last month I could finish my PhD. I'm a doctor now. <laughs> Call me doctor. I I finished B PhD. So until <laughs> last month I was a student as well, and my supervisor is Tsukamoto, Professor Tsukamoto, and for four years uh, I wrote the doctoral thesis in uh, Tokyo Tech. And my thesis is, uh, the title is the scalar rhetoric of uh, spatial dimensioning. And uh, yes, maybe it's, uh, yeah, I didn't think, so I didn't think about Sakamoto so much, but uh, actually through this uh, doctoral, doctoral thesis, I could understand more about the Sakamoto. So I need to explain about it. This is about uh, the, um, yeah, it's an analysis about the contemporary architecture from the point of view of relative spatial dimensioning in one architecture. So I have to explain the Swiss architecture, Peter Marquis. As you know, this uh, building, this museum is made from mainly from these three spaces, three exhibition room. And uh, yes, it's this three space room um, organized by the dimension. So it has uh, different lengths and uh, different height and the same width. So these three spaces is, uh, uh, let's say, controlled by the parameter of the height and the length and the constant as the length, uh, the width. So I I analyze uh, a lot of architectural, architectural works from the point of view from this such a parameter and the constant of dimension. And uh, another reference is also Swiss architecture, Jigong uh, Guye. And uh, in this case, uh, yes, the, a sort of set of dimension of the depth and the height are repeated. Uh, so little by little, it's getting bigger. So it has a sort of, uh, um, how to say, the self-referential um, network inside one architecture. This is, uh, yes, I, I'm very interested in such uh, expression. 
especially we could see from from 90s, uh, we could see such a self-free financial um, expression about the dimension. And uh, I wrote uh, mainly uh, three, three thesis, three analyzes. One is about the dimensioning by composition of stories, so floors. Uh, second is dimensioning by arrangement of rooms. And the third one is arrangement of elements. Element is a wall, um, roof, and floor, and so on. So, yeah, I analyzed this kind of expression of spatial dimensioning from the point of view of uh, stories and rooms and uh, elements. So, today I would explain about the stories, the first one. Yes, this is, uh, uh, in this chapter, I analyze, especially in the contemporary architecture after the World War, and, uh, and until the 60s, the one stories house is a little bit, uh, it's a little bit uh, more than a uh, multiple stories house. But now, yeah, we, could, we have no chance to design the one stories house because uh, in Japan it's very small, and now it's getting smaller. So a lot of uh, architect works is, uh, has uh, at least two stories, or uh, sometimes five stories, especially in Tokyo. So that's why I'm, I'm focused on the, to, to, to study the uh, Japanese contemporary house, which has uh, uh, multiple stories. This is an example, the masterpiece by uh, Yoshimura. Yes, the uh, downstairs, the ground floor is uh, small, it features entrance, and upper floor features void, and the maximum uh, surface. So middle floor is the maximum volume. So yeah, at the dominant floor, we can say it's this floor, and uh, yes, the, the, the roof appears inside. Yes, I, I analyze the, the, the ceiling height, which has no void or which has void, and also the, the surface, the downstairs is bigger or middle floor is bigger, and so on. And the position of entrance, the almost of all has, uh, yeah, they have in the downstairs. The relation between uh, downstairs and the ground floor, at uh, the ground, or uh, the relation is upstairs and the roof. So it's the roof shape appears in inside, or uh, it's uh, hidden with the ceiling, or a flat roof. Yes, we, we could find the, a sort of uh, type so this three type has a sort of uh, unit. So the ceiling height and the surface is, uh, so here's the maximum volume in uh, downstairs, middle floor, and upper floor, and so on. And uh, finally, we could find the typology of this expression. And this is a sort of uh, uh, a conclusion this matrix is, um, yes, it says in Japanese, uh, the size of uh, space is the maximum, maximum, uh, maximum space is in the upper floor, and the maximum size of space in the down, downstairs. So this is uh, the upper floor and uh, yeah, downstairs. So for example, this is uh, the ground floor has the maximum volume and which, has, which um, exists on the ground, and also it has uh, entrance. So a lot of things in, the, in uh, this floor has almost everything, let's say. So um, this, is, this is Shinohara, Ashitaka. It has also the ground floor, maximum surface, and the ceiling height and it appears, the, the roof shape appears in the uh, inside, and so on. And the uh, right hand is, I say, 
Yes. Uh, these expressions, these typology use the contrast between the ground and the sky. So as I said, uh, yes, for example, this, in this space, Shinohara, uh, this space is connected to the ground and also, yeah, through this uh, shape of roof, they can feel a sort of sky. And also this, the, the, the big volume on the ground level and the maximum volume. So yes, this space is a sort of dominant in this house and uh, it, it express, uh, express the connection to the ground. So rather than to the sky, it, uh, it uh, emphasizes the connection to the ground. And the right hand, I, uh, it wrote, uh, they don't use the uh, contrast between sky and the ground. Actually, this is uh, uh, Sakamoto and the Bow Wow. Sakamoto hides the roof shape by the ceiling. And there's no difference of ceiling height in uh, two floors. There's no difference of the surface in uh, two floors. So, of course, uh, there's a, uh, you know, actually, as I experience, there's a difference of, uh, in uh, two floors, but uh, as an expression of uh, dimensioning, uh, we can say he tried to um, weaken the contrast of the sky and the ground. Well, also, mini house by Atre Bawao, they made a uh, uh, sort of um, maximum space in the middle floor, which has the entrance as well. And also, they shift the position of the ground. So it's a semi underground floor, and it's a, a flat roof. So it also, yeah, they don't use the uh, ground, or they, they don't depend on the ground and the sky, let's say. So there's a, we can say the dimensioning by um, composition of story can be, we can say, uh, it's a kind of layering of two kinds of contrast of uh, the size of uh, the each floor, size of the space on the uh, upper floor and the downstairs, and also contrast of uh, the sky and the ground. And uh, yeah, like this. And uh, yes, this is a sort of a, a conclusion of my thesis. In uh, composition of the stories, I, as, I, as I explained, uh, yes, the contrast between uh, floors, it's a very um, important thing. And also how they deal with the contrast between the ground and the sky. These two contrast is um, sort of uh, fundamental in uh, uh, composition of the stories. And uh, yeah, I have no time to, to explain so much, but uh, in uh, arrangement, of, arrangement of rooms, uh, hierarchy is uh, sort of, it's an important, important system. For example, in this case, uh, yes, at first, uh, yeah, there is, a two, there is uh, three rooms, but at first, uh, yes, it compared the, these two area. Uh, the height uh, compared with each other. And next, they compared these uh, depths. One. So this building can be shown, it, uh, it made with the first hierarchy, a first operation and the second operation. There is a hierarchy in, uh, in uh, spatial dimensioning. And uh, next, the last one is arrangement of elements. In this case, well, especially, for example, the building features a roof. Inside the, uh, under the roof, uh, uh, there is an there is a interrelation between uh, uh, dimension. For example, the height and the depth are related uh, or re repeated. 
But anyway, uh, the, the roof, in this case, the roof could be a sort of a dominant element in this architecture. So, yeah, in arrangement of uh, elements, uh, interrelation could be a sort of a strong system. And this is a final, uh, let's say, conclusion. The uh, system, uh, no, it's, uh, ab it's about the stories and the rooms and elements. Uh, as I said, uh, yeah, it, the, as a system, uh, contrast and hierarchy and the interrelation could be, could be fundamental. And uh, yes, in a, st in a composition of a story, the contrast between upper floor and downstairs or uh, contrast between uh, sky and the ground would be important things. So they make a big ground floor, they make a big up, upper floor, or features a void, or something. But anyway, they use the system of contrast. But we can also choose not to use this contrast like Sakamoto. And I think this is an um, important point of view to talk about Sakamoto. And uh, maybe, for example, it's uh, easy to compare with next Shinohara. Shinohara is, uh, as you know, he made a lot of beautiful house. It's very clear and uh, strong. But uh, his building is, uh, ma, almost all of his building is uh, made with uh, such a contrast contrast of space. He make a sort of maximum size of room and a super tiny bedroom. But anyway, his expression is always focused on this main big space. But uh, for Sakamoto, he, he, he was not uh, interested in such a thing. He always uh, care about the relation between the elements, be relation between the rooms and so on. So this is uh, a sort of uh, different from Shinohara. I will show you his uh, uh, two house, Machia in Minase. Look, this height is less than uh, four meter. Maybe you cannot understand what I say. This is two stories house, but uh, it's only four meter. When I visited, when I was a teenager, maybe 90 years, years old, I was so shocked when I looked at this house. It looks very low as the two stories, and also, yeah, very big as the one stories. So this building, it's, um, I, I, I have never seen such a building. But what I did is just control the proportion of the elevation. Very simple things, but uh, it makes the architecture. And his plan is something, uh, yeah, very different from Shinohara. Always his, uh, yeah, every element, every room, every space are related to each other. So of course there's a difference of the size, or here's a living room, it might be the biggest space. But uh, let's say it's equal, it's equal as a relation with uh, the toilet and the garage. And actually, he never put the name of function. He said he called this garage uh, outside room one. He called this garden outside room two. Very funny. Yes, this is the inside. And this is uh, Machia in Daita, Kyasen visited. This is, uh, I think it, it's, um, yeah, I like, I, I like the best. And uh, this uh, building is, uh, yeah, 1976. It's the uh, same year with uh, Azuma House by Ando, Tada Ando, and uh, Nakano Honcho by Toyo Ito. So compare with them, it, yeah. Their building would be much more 
famous than this house, but actually this building is, uh, yeah, something uh, future than such a closed house by Tadao Ando and uh, Toyo Ito. And uh, I say this is uh, maybe first building uh, in the world or in Japan, which can only made by relations. Everything is defined only by the relation. So yes, yeah, in uh, Machia in um, Minase, it's, he already started, but uh, yes, in this project, he, is, he was very conscious about it. Every rectangular room are equal completely. And uh, yes, he put again outside room one, this is a courtyard, and, but his, this is an um, uh, entrance hall with stairs. He called it, uh, yeah, um, intermediate room one. <laughs> but anyway, he wanted to deal with them very equally. <laughs> and uh, yes, there's a difference, propor difference proportion and uh, a sort of relation with the connection. But uh, his, uh, his uh, interest is to, to organize the relation of the space. And uh, yeah, this is what I learned from him. This is my point of view. But he is very original and uh, I learned a lot from him about the scale and the proportion. And the scale and the proportion doesn't mean the beautiful scale or something correct scale or a beautiful proportion like uh, golden or uh, geometry or symmetry or something like that. He never depend on such a thing, such a certain, such a definite thing. He always try to something um, update uh, the meaning of architecture or a relation with the environment. Or he always try to update the revelation of body sense. This is what I personally, I learned from him. And uh, it's a bit opposite from Shinohara. Shinohara, I got a strong influence also from Shinohara, but uh, his uh, proportion is always depends on a sort of beauty, always depends on the uh, geometry and so on. He believed something, uh, the definite world. But, uh, Yes, maybe Sakamoto uh, understood and he was so conscious about, uh, yeah, we are now in a more something uncertain, uncertain era, uncertain situation. So maybe we cannot believe such a definite, such a, uh, we cannot believe even beauty or geometry. So he need to, uh, overcome this uh, big problem. Actually, I know the Swiss people like uh, Shinohara, that uh, it's great, it's, uh, it's very nice buildings. But uh, yes, we need to understand what Sakamoto has ever thought. And uh, yes, from, from now, I, I will show my, my practice, especially from the point of view of what I learned from Sakamoto, especially scale and proportion. Um, first building is um, the weekend house in the forest named the Pirotina Forest. It's in uh, Karizawa, three hours by car from Tokyo. And uh, the characteristic of this house is in a section, yes. It's very, it has very high purities, like this. It has uh, um, 6.5 meters, at, and uh, there's no inside space. And uh, everything, the interior is in the upper, up, upper floor. Uh, ground level is in a stru uh, the steel structure, and the upper floor is made by timber the wooden structure. Plan is something simple. We call this uh, pilot space 
uh, piazza in the forest. And uh, yes, upper floor is very simple, terrace and uh, dining space, bedroom and uh, bathroom. For me, it's an um, important project for me. Um, yes, we tried a lot. We tried to check the proportion of these uh, purities, and finally we could find out the height, 6.5. And uh, this proportion for me, of course, uh, if it's a different uh, forest, maybe the height would be changed, I think. But uh, at least in this forest, 6.5 height, meters height, is, um, I think it's the best. Because uh, we can feel it, it's uh, outside, but the stair is in, inside. If it's a bit higher, it becomes more outside, or melting in the forest. If it's uh, lower, like six meter, it starts to be something uh, um, inside, under the volume, and so on. So this is a sort of, uh, yeah, sense of tension of the height, um, which can be both feeling um, inside and outside. And uh, yeah, the ceiling is made by the, the, the volume or the beams, and the floor is made by concrete foundation, and the wall is made by the green of existing trees. The detail, and uh, yeah, you can coming up just beside the tree. And the upper floor is very, very compact, intimate space, like uh, um, um, attic space, but which it has a very huge window. It's attached to the uh, trees, like this. And also the dining, dining table is made by the grass and also for a, I put the grass. So you can look down, the, you can check the children who are playing on the purity space. So when you wake up in the morning, you, you, you cook the sandwich and with a friend, you eat the breakfast in this uh, purity space. So this purity space is a sort of a meeting space with nature. And uh, yeah, in a day, daily, daily time, uh, they spend the time in this space they put the hammock between the column and uh, drink from the morning and uh, sleep from the morning again. And so this is a um, uh, new way of uh, staying in a uh, forest. Uh, but what I did is uh, only control the proportion of the purity. Don't you think so? And uh, yes, from now I will show you uh, three project. Everything is um, uh, two stories house. I really like two stories house. Actually Sakamoto made a lot of two stories house. But this is not my reason why I like two stories house, but uh, Yes, I like uh, Sakamoto's uh, two stories house. As I explained, he always deal with the relation between uh, upper floor and the downstairs, somehow. But uh, yes, I, I also like to think 
the, the to think relation between two and to think about the ground and the sky as well. But uh, I'm, maybe I'm a bit different for how the, the way of dealing with the stories from Sakamoto. Uh, first one is house in Komazawa. It's in a residential area in the center of Tokyo. Uh, fortunately, this house uh, is facing to the small uh, um, forest. And uh, what I did is uh, two things. One is to make a very big uh, ground floor. So let's say it's an interior version of Pilotina Forest, let's say. And the second floor, the upper floor, is almost like uh, attic space. And the second thing I did is to make a uh, uh, semi-transparent floor. This is made by, yes, this uh, timber. We call it uh, two by three. Uh, uh, three, 38 millimeter by uh, 53 millimeter. And uh, I arranged this uh, timber with gap. In the end, we decide to make a gap of uh, three centimeter. I checked with the uh, leg of daughter of the client. And uh, Yes, we put the eucalypts in the outside wall. So this is a really wooden house from outside, like this. Now it's almost gray, so it's, it's totally changed. And uh, in inside, it's, uh, yes, as I, as I put the stone on the floor, Rather than a private room, it looks like a, a sort of a public space. And uh, yes, we put a very huge window, which can be completely open towards a small forest from a garden. And uh, as you see, you can see a little bit the, 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 sli uh, the folding door of upstairs. So sound and wind and the skylight, uh, the, the light, sunlight and the smell, everything is uh, coming through between the floor. And uh, yes, the, this height, this height is 1.65 meters. This height of the window is also very important because uh, yes, this, uh, this street in front of this house is uh, a bit uh, uh, passage to the very big park named Komazawa Park. So all the time a lot of people jog or are walking with uh, a dog. But I don't like to, to protect so much. So somehow we need to find out a sort of uh, uh, so sense of tension, of openness and uh, protection. 1.65. And uh, yes, in uh, upper floor, yes, you can look up like this from downstairs. From uh, upper floor, yes. You can, you can see a little bit this diamond mark on the, on the street. So even if it's a very intimate, like attic space, you can feel a sort of public feeling from below, from the street, from the living room. So yeah, the different feeling are mixed in one space. This is the uh, house in Komazawa. And this is the casting gears. <laughs> 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 
Next one is house in Kyodo. This is also very tiny two stories uh, in the wooden house. Uh, fortunately, again, in front of this house, which has a garden, and in front of this house, it's also very, very small garden. Because it's very, very tiny plot, uh, I need to catch. I need, I wanted to use these uh, uh, green in uh, neighbors. And uh, the client is uh, the couple of editor. The wife is the uh, uh, editor of tabloid newspaper. And the husband is the uh, editor of manga. He's an uh, otaku of manga. He's an uh, addict of manga and the collector of uh, manga. <laughs> and uh, actually, it was a bit hard for me to start this project because he they has a large amount of books. And uh, yeah, at first uh, I check the volume and uh, almost uh, half of the house it could be a bookshelf. So this is a, a bit problem. And uh, also they lived in a very nice uh, flat on the rooftop. So it was a, a bit pressure for me because they already lived in a very comfortable space on the rooftop of the fifth floor, and uh, yes, uh, 360 panoramic view. It's, but uh, he, they decided to build their house in a very uh, uh, small site in a residential area, so it was a pressure for me. That's why I need to make something very open, open feeling space, um, like they lived. <coughs> and uh, my proposal is to make uh, two different space, two different uh, floor. Ground floor is made by the bookshelf, so this is not uh, the house. This is the house of books. I just arranged the bookshelf, but they can stay between the book. It's okay, they can, they can stay or they can study between the book. And uh, this bookshelf worked as a structure. It supports the floor, upper floor. And the uh, upper floor is only living room and uh, terrace. It's one room. And it's totally open. It's a very simple building. What I did is two things, again. <laughs> uh, one thing is it's a kind of opposite from uh, the house in Komazawa, I make a very low ground floor space, which has only 1.82. This is uh, my, my height. <laughs> and uh, yes, it's quite low. Because uh, the wife has a problem in, on, on the leg, so she worried to 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 live in a, to live in a two stories house, she she worried to the 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 circulation of the two stories because she always lived in an apartment which has an elevator, so yeah this is one reason and the second reason is a bookshelf I don't like a bookshelf which has a, um, which appears in a very big like a three meters high and so on. I like uh, to, to make uh, something more, uh, yeah, we can familiar with uh, the, the scale of the bookshelf. And the uh, second thing I did is to make a uh, very thin roof. Look, this, <coughs> this is the roof, which has only six, six centimeter thickness. This is a detail, wow. Um, yes, like this, and uh, it's made by steel plate, uh, steel plate, um, uh, 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 deck plate sandwiched by the steel plate. Uh, so, yes, until this wall, it's uh, a wooden structure, like this, like uh, H, H shape, and above this uh, wooden structure, we placed this uh, steel roof. <coughs> the 
So this is a structure. Structure appears as a ceiling. This is a ground level, and uh, yes, the outside and the inside is uh, the same level almost, and the same material, the concrete panel. So it's uh, totally continu continuous between inside and outside. And uh, he always changes the position of manga. He like uh, he likes lang manga very much. And actually, he has a very, very um, expensive, rare, very old, before World War manga. I like him very much. So between the, between the bookshelf, there's a yeah, washing space, and the study room, and the bedroom. But it's not their house. They can stay in a book house. Stairway, look, this is uh, maybe the most shortest straight stairway in the world, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, only ten. I was ho so happy to make it. <laughs> and the uh, upper floor is a uh, uh, very, very, yeah, different space from uh, the ground floor, which has a uh, um, steel panel ceiling. Always it reflects the neighbor's green like this. So it appears like a surface of water of a pond. So always it reflects the, this is the opposite side of the street. And it reflects the color of green of neighbor's garden. And uh, Yes, in the daytime, um, every day, every time, every season, the condition of the light is uh, changing, of course. Actually, always, yeah, I like the two stories being a timber uh, wooden structure house, but always I worry the proportion of roof because the wooden roof is always something very thick because of the the beam, and uh, always uh, I feel a sort of heavy in above. So this is a sort of uh, experiment for to 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 lighten the above of uh, the uh, wooden house. Nice detail. <laughs> and this, this is a house in Kyoto. And uh, this is a sort of a new project uh, it's finished in last year. Uh, first time for me to design the uh, 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 two families house two families house for the young couple and his mother. It's in a suburbia of Tokyo. Yes, this is the building, uh, house in, uh, low house in Ageo. This is a, uh, maybe first building I, I thought from the facade. I designed from the facade. So I'm already European architect, perhaps. And uh, what I did is to make a very simple facade because it, in Sababia, uh, recently, it's, it's, it's terrible. Um, like uh, like this, it's uh, made by like this. It's a new building, but uh, yes, look, they make a very big setback for the car, like a drugstore, like a convenience store. 
even if they have only one car. They never thought. And uh, look, yes, here is uh, maybe bathroom because it has a rubber. Here is uh, maybe toilet because it's uh, small. Maybe this is a uh, bedroom. I think this is a big problem for the client of this house. Maybe it's okay, no, no problem. But uh, maybe they must believe they are very, very protected and uh, completely private space. But actually, I can easily understand when the mother enters the bathroom. Here. Or when their children start to sleep. Here. I think this is uh, not a problem, but uh, I don't like this situation. Yeah, building tell a lie to the client. Building say to the client, this is totally protected. You are lucky, you are happy, I don't know. But uh, yes, from outside, it's totally transparent. I can say this is very transparent because of the functionalism of the window. So I wanted to think about this big problem in suburbia. And I decided what I, my answer is very, very simple, to make uh, one kind of uh, window. It's double opening window. It's very big, almost two meter. And there's no difference between a window and a door because uh, this is, as I said, the two families house. Always two families to the house has a two entrance door, two post. Sometime it has a stairway and a door in a ground level and also upper level. So from outside, uh, everybody can recognize it in a, a two family house. It's okay. But, uh, I wanted to think about uh, that problem of, uh, yes, functional, functional transparency. So I place the yeah, symmetrical facade, which has uh, the same size window. This. This is a, yes, double opening window. But the left hand is a door, entrance door for the mother's house. And the right hand is son's house. Look, this window, left hand is a, a bedroom for the couple. And the right hand is for the bathroom. So even if we, I place a very big window, it's big, very big as a house, but uh, it's very semi-transparency. People cannot recognize it as uh, even two stories house. People cannot recognize it uh, or where is a bathroom. So actually it's very transparent because it's a very big window, but uh, from outside, it's very difficult to recognize. Yes, the mother's entrance and the son's entrance. Yeah, mother is uh, very old, so in the ground floor is mother's house, and the upper floor is son's house. This is the uh, yeah, ground floor plan, the mother's entrance, and the mother's uh, private space in the north side. Upper floor, Yes, sun comes up, and the left hand is a living room and the bedroom. And the right hand is a dining kitchen and the children's room. But uh, above this stairway, there's one more space, which has a bathroom and the terrace. But uh, it's a stepped terrace in a section like this. Yes, it's a triangle mother's bathroom and the entrance approaching to upstairs for the son's house. 
And above this uh, stairway, yes, this here is also, there's also um, triangle space, which uh, the, this is a bathroom of the son's house and also terrace. Mother's house, son's approach, son's uh, living room, and uh, dining kitchen, and the entrance. You can see the passengers of the uh, street. And uh, above this uh, stair, yes, here is a terrace, step to terrace. This uh, volume, uh, uh, separate the one room space, spatially. The beam is coming out like this. Uh, yes, this is as I explained, this is a facade and left hand of the uh, upper floor. This is the bathroom, which has uh, uh, 90, 56 millimeter, it's wide, stepped space, and uh, it's connected to the kitchen, and the left hand is a bathroom, and the right hand is a toilet and uh, terrace. Like this. This is a um, townhouse in Ageo. No, no, low house in Ageo. And more two project, recent project. It's finished in uh, in the last at uh, in the end of last year. Apartment in uh, really center of Tokyo in Okachimachi. It's near from the Ueno, the Rukorubize Museum. Uh, was built. And uh, yes, here, it's apartment building. As you see, it's very, very chaotic area, uh, like this. And uh, this is a uh, house of the, my client, and uh, two stories house, so I like it. <laughs> But uh, he, they decided to make an uh, apartment uh, building and they live on the top floor. So rather than the residential area, a lot of office and shops and uh, yes, some, of, some apartments. So actually it's not uh, uh, the place to live because it's very center of Tokyo. This is, this is my, our study. At first, uh, we check the volume and the uh, maximum height, maximum volume, let's say, it's uh, 26 meters high. And uh, yes, we divide maybe, yeah, the height would be 3.2 meters high each and it becomes eight floors. And uh, I start to think to change the, um, how to say, the density of the volume to make a sort of contrast of density inside the volume. So same height, same volume, but somehow I make it you know, 10 floors. So each floor has only 2.8 meters high. But uh, yes, because uh, two floors uh, add, so it can have a lot of void. So it can be like a sponge. It has a sort of uh, gap in horizontally and vertically. And uh, 
why I, I thought such a thing is, one thing is, uh, as I said, it, here is, uh, is not the place to live. And uh, actually it's not so safe place. So, so somehow I have to think about the sort of security or uh, how much I should open this apartment and so on. And the second th thing is, yes, the gap between the building. In Japan, it's uh, different from uh, Europe. We have a gap between the building we, 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 because uh, we should uh, make a setback uh, in a regulation at least uh, 50 centimeter. We have to set back from the boundary line. So in total, normally, we can have at least one meter gap between the building. And uh, yes, that's why as you might see in Tokyo, we can have a, yeah, a lot of ventilation and the water pipe and so on in the uh, gap side. But uh, somehow, yeah, because uh, this site is not so big again, somehow I want to use and I want to emphasize this potential of Tokyo, which is uh, totally connected to the, to the flow of Tokyo with this gap. So somehow I want to connect the gap of neighbors. And uh, for example, this, this is the second floor. Uh, what I did is each floor has two apartment like this, but the two apartment is totally uh, separated. So two apartment uh, has a gap between them. And uh, yes, Gap is coming and out. And the second thing is, yes, here is a, let's say, courtyard. This is outside, which has no skylight. But the little by little library apartment is coming out this space. Somehow I try to make, try to uh, shift the hierarchy between the room. For example, downstairs, this has 10 floors, 10 stories. So the second floor is the most, uh, let's say, uncomfortable space compared with top floor. But somehow I, want to, I wanted to shift this uh, hierarchy between the floor. So I want to change the a sort of system which the upper floor is more comfortable. And uh, also, yeah, there's a north apartment and a south apartment. That's why, yes, I wanted to give something to the north side as well. So let's say this is a study to shift the hierarchy of the floors or south and the north. And every floor has a different uh, plan, like this, like that, like this, like that, like this, like that, like this, like that. But uh, it looks, uh, it might be looked as uh, complicated, but it's very simple rule, principle. Um, yes, even from the second floor, they can look up to the sky through this void from the third floor, fifth floor, from every floor they can look up to the sky. It's uh, something special. And uh, sometimes we make a horizontal void like this by controlling the arrangement of the apartment. And uh, here, yes, it's a neighbor's building. And actually from this terrace, they can enjoy the uh, hanabi, fireworks in the summer through this void <laughs> to this direction. They have a very, very, the most biggest fireworks in a, in a fire festival in Tokyo. And this is, uh, it's completed in last Christmas. Look, I like this. This is uh, one, two, three, four stories. 
what I did is one, two, three, four, five series. I was happy to find it. Sometime uh, I place the rectangular uh, terrace on the corner. This is the entrance hall. Uh, this is the second floor, which has, uh, yes, we call it the uh, Chugent Hut House, but it's very small, <laughs> very cheap, Chugent Hut. It's a void. You can look down between, through the gap, look down the entrance hall. And this is neighbor's, neighbor's house. Here is the uh, entrance. And this is the uh, fifth floor, maybe. And uh, from the north side, uh, this is the most north side. Let's say it's the uh, most uh, deepest spot. But from here, look, you can look through this void, through this terrace to the south directly. I placed a lot of the connection of view through this gap between the apartment, horizontally and diagonally, like this. Through this uh, void and the terrace, you can look directly, you can look to the south. And this is a uh, yeah, void. A lot of skylight in each floor, like this. And uh, here, yeah, this is a study room. You can look up to the sky directly with walking. Yeah, right hand. And the left hand is apartment, and uh, when you 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 go out from the elevator, at first uh, you look the gap between the apartment. <laughs> A lot of uh, connection in from each floor, uh, each apartment. In the upper floor, you can get the skylight like this. Or oh, uh, here is a corner uh, triangle terrace, like this. From the top floor, yes. So actually what I wanted to make is a, yes, a kind of a, a new kinds of gap. But, uh, yeah, let's say this is uh, in between unconscious and uh, something uh, community of apartment. It's not a big building, so I couldn't make a courtyard, let's say. Um, so I couldn't make a sort of a community in uh, of the apartment. And uh, but uh, somehow. I like this uh, a sort, sort of in-between character of uh, unconscious or between gap and uh, courtyard. I, we can say it courtyard or we can say it the gap. It means um, it's totally connected to the uh, public because it, in the ground level it's connected to the street. So basically people can enter and uh, it's uh, also connected to, to the terrace or uh, approaching. So it's, as a specially, it's connected to the common space. And uh, as you saw, yes, this space also shared with the private space. So public, common, private are connected very smoothly. This is, uh, it, might, it was possible because of this, uh, Proportion. So I try to make the, the public, common, private can be coexisted with the proportion. Last project is, uh, yes, it's now in, uh, uh, we are. Yeah, cost, cost control now. And from next month, uh, the construction starts. 
in Taiwan, in Taipei. We, uh, the project name is Xinhu Market. This is a um, um, refurbishment or an extension of uh, historical building. So it's uh, my first uh, opportunity to do such a thing. And uh, yes, this is uh, Taipei. Here is the Xinhu Market. Actually now it's the center of tai Taipei is here. Here is the uh, uh, airport and uh, the center of the uh, uh, yeah, center of business is here. But uh, Xinhu around here is a sort of first uh, district of uh, Taiwan. It's in the uh, beginning of the 20th century. Taipei, uh, Xinhu Market is a super, super cute building. I was so lucky. Look, this is almost like uh, Nakano Honcho building, White Yu House by Toyo Ito. The proportion is, uh, of course, different, but uh, yes, I, I, I could uh, make a renovation of this building. And uh, this, this is a second concrete building in Taipei, which is built in uh, 1932. So it's protected now. And uh, yeah, the Taipei government, Taipei city government and the uh, construction company asked me to design of interior of this uh, protected building. Super cute building. One story, it's concrete, very narrow, courtyard, like Okachimachi apartment. Super cute. And, uh, but uh, here is also a market. It's a, let's say, illegal market. In the beginning, uh, it was so popular in, uh, in the middle of the uh, 20th century. But little by little, people, yeah, people uh, make this, made this uh, uh, market. And also there's some problem uh, of building, of waterproof and so on. And maybe it's also problem, it looks too monumental, as you see. As a market, it's too strong, I think. And also the direction of the building is also a little bit strange. Why you make a facade to, to this direction? I couldn't understand. But uh, somehow, yes, I wanted to, I, I did uh, the renovation. And uh, yes, as you see in Taipei, they make a sort of uh, illegal extension of the roof, on the roof. So sometimes loggia, sometimes uh, inside, even inside, so there's some rooms, maybe it's an illegal extension. It's interesting to see. Yeah, in, uh, several years ago, it's, uh, the situation of Taipei market was like this, but the government uh, cleaned up. My, it's a bit of a pity to do such a way, but my, it's okay. And uh, yes, it's also like this. Um, people uh, made an uh, extension illegally and uh, there's also illegal market around uh, this building. So government demolished some part. Uh, this is a courtyard. It has only 1.5 meter. Inside, because, of, because it was market, they sell the chicken and the fish and so on. So they need a lot of ventilation. They need a lot of windows. So it's, it's very bright, super comfortable as a space. And uh, maybe they didn't think about the comfort, but uh, yeah, as a result now, it's very, very bright. And uh, as you see, and uh, yeah, this is the uh, courtyard. Yes, there's a drain. 
So in the outside and inside, they place the, a lot of, uh, they arrange the market, the small shops. And here is, uh, you, can, you can see the drain. So in the evening after, uh, before closing, they, they wash uh, with water. And uh, yes, so in order to make it, they made the drain. And here is a passenger, uh, the route for the passenger, for the guest. Uh, this is original uh, booth of the market, made by timber. It's very good, so I, I would use it. And the uh, government and the uh, construction company asked me to, to make a uh, interior design of this building. And they wanted to make uh, so the space that young people come. Because uh, as I explained, uh, this district is uh, now the place, the area only all the people lives. So they wanted to make uh, a sort of in incubation for uh, young people, or uh, young people and all the, all the people can meet here, like this. So yeah, it's very cute, but uh, it's too monumental, and also it's uh, too hidden uh, from surroundings, I thought. This is from uh, the uh, illegal market. You can see the facade. Market, market, market. They have a problem of uh, uh, waterproof, so they plan to uh, renovate of the waterproof on the rooftop. So all the time after the a storm, it's um, uh, like this, it's, uh, it was a problem. Yes. They placed a lot of windows for the ventilation, but also they placed a very, very huge uh, ventilation on, onto the rooftop, which has a uh, uh, 60 centimeter diameter. So what I propose to the government is to make a roof above the roof and uh, to insert the timber column through the ventilation hole. So this is independent, very huge uh, timber column. And this is membrane. Because it's a protected uh, important building, we cannot, uh, we cannot uh, give a, 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 a gravity or a, a, a weight on the also rooftop. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, they say we can, we can make a new, uh, new basement or something. So we can make a new pillar and also we place the steel beam which can make a balance. But uh, basically it's uh, heavy of the upper floor would be supported from with this uh, timber column. So yes. There's no risk to the existing building, but uh, they can get uh, uh, two times of the surface of the inside. So they looked happy, and they are very pleased with this idea. This is an uh, axonometric drawing. Actually, yes, this is, this is an existing situation. It's a safe market, and also 
it's a very old uh, public toilet, and uh, they asked me to uh, design this public toilet. So I made a, a moon shape toilet like this. So it's uh, almost a symmetrical plan. And uh, here is a gap. So this is uh, approaching entrance. And uh, the position of the ventilation, we placed uh, 10 columns, timber columns. In downstairs, it's a uh, yeah, sharing office for young people and the kitchen and so on. Now we are still thinking about the uh, program of ground floor. Anyway, it's uh, open to the public. <coughs> and the public toilet and the machine space. And this is a new building we will make. And the upper floor is something more open space because under the membrane, it's very bright always. So it's an exhibition space for the artists. And actually this construction company has a foundation of art and they already started the support to the artist. So they invite the artist here as the atelier, and sometimes they will, ex exhibit, they will make an exhibition here. Or here's a lecture room. But uh, yeah, sometimes they can make it, they can use it as an open space in the center of uh, this uh, district. This is the elevation. So yes, I, I'm still thinking about the proportion of roof, but uh, yeah, around here is more something private, and it's a lecture room, it's a common space, and here is uh, the most biggest uh, space for the exhibition and so on. So private, common, public. Private, common, public. This is the image of the inside. Actually, yes, the existing situation is very cute, but uh, it's too one line, one direction, uh, only continuity. So I thought to, they need a sort of uh, space. So I hope uh, these columns work for something uh, division or something uh, yeah, the point uh, people can gather. In upper floor, yeah, sometimes they make a workshop or training or taikyoku ken. It's uh, from outside. This is the last image, I think. So yes, at first it was started from the interior design of the uh, protected building, but actually it's, uh, I think it's um, a sort of uh, urban planning. Urban planning by interior design. So this is uh, less monumental and a little bit higher. So it's a kind of new relation to the neighbors. And also, yes, uh, 360 uh, uh, direction. Uh, they op it, this building open to every direction. So I hope uh, this building would be a new center, new community to this uh, district. Yes, this is uh, the end, but I would finish with uh, the um, advertisement of my book, uh, Conversations with European Architects. Maybe I, I, I believe, I think uh, every EPFL student already bought it and read it <laughs> and come today. But if you miss it, 
please check it. I made an interview to the Alvaro Cesar, Barrio Ojati, Peter Mercury, Lakaton Bassar, Pascal Frama, and uh, KGBVS. <laughs> <laughs> I I ask them about the mainly yeah it's a bit uh, free talk but uh, mainly I I ask about the question uh, how um, the architectural history how we can deal with architectural history in such an unclear situation and uh, every six architects answer very very uh, positively and uh, I. It uh, encouraged me as well. So I think it's a very nice book. Please uh, check it. <laughs> OK, thank you. That's it. still before everybody runs up. Um, maybe to start, go. I realize, in fact, two things at the same time. The Sakamoto buildings you show mm -hmm. are until mid-70s. The last building you show, the Taiwan Taipei mm -hmm. building, it all of a sudden reminded me to the period afterwards. All of a sudden, I saw a building with the roof, Mm -hmm. And that's Sakamoto, late 70s, mm -hmm. early 80s, where mm -hmm. he collapses all of a sudden the idea of the room, where the roof becomes a tent, mm -hmm. uh, and where in a way he tries to, at least that's how I understood it, uh, take, um, let's say, the urban world inside the house. Mm -hmm. in sense. So um, I was wondering, in this urban project you showed that, and you can meet linked immediately in your housing projects are still very close to the sort of tent to the Sakamoto of the first period, right? Proportion, mm -hmm. height, and space. Could you see yourself related to that second period Sakamoto in the house as well? Or do you feel that is something which you cannot relate to? Especially the last project? Taiwan project, you mean? No, the Sakamoto of the, um, the house with the tent-like structure, which you make afterwards. Uh, right? House uh, F. Yeah. Yeah. So that reminds you somehow to the Taipei project? Mm -hmm. That's but in your houses, you're really very far from that. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious how you relate to the second period Sakamoto. Second period, maybe third period. Or third period. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and house F, I don't have, uh, I have it. Maybe it's better to show the guy. House F, uh, this is, this is. <coughs> yes, after the, after the period of uh, roof shape, yes, it, he tried to make a, to, to think deeply about uh, the update of uh, roof shapes. And uh, this is uh, a little bit manieristic in a postmodern period. And in the end of the 80s, uh, Maybe 1988, he made a house safe. It's house for the uh, historian in Tokyo Tech, Fujioka Sensei. And uh, yes, actually, now I notice. Yeah, I guess I notice now. And uh, yes, it's true. He somehow tried to 
we freed from the a sort of icon of the roof shape. And actually, it's interesting. Uh, I asked before about it, and uh, this is uh, something complicated roof. But uh, he said this is also roof shape. This is also the image of uh, roof. So roof, roof shape doesn't, not always does mean uh, this kind of uh, gable roof. So actually I, want, I, I thought in, uh, in Taipei it's a bit similar what I'm talking now. Um, this is something, uh, of course, it's a bit like a monster in, uh, in this district. But at the same time, I try to find a sort of proportion of the silhouette of roof which uh, people can accept, people can welcome. So this is uh, something, uh, mm, yeah, I, I feel a sort of similarity of what uh, Sakamoto says. It, actually, it's as a design process, Sakamoto and me come from the, a sort of image from inside to make a sort of uh, freedom in uh, space. So only uh, pillars and uh, big roof can make a sort of free space in uh, above the roof, under the roof. But uh, as a result, uh, of course, uh, the roof appears in, uh, in the landscape. And uh, I'm still uh, thinking about the, what is the best proportion of the uh, membrane. I can only control by the height of each pillar. So there's no so many variation, but uh, mm, I believe to find something uh, new proportion. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you very much, then. Uh, thanks a lot again. And so if you have already bought the book of uh, Go, don't forget to buy this one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, thanks again.